Hello, I'm Dr. Annie Matthew, and I'm here with you today for microcomputer keyboarding. We're going to learn about creating a block style letter. We'll be using Microsoft Word today to develop this task. Okay, we've launched Microsoft Word. We need to make a few adjustments to the Word environment before beginning our letter. First, on the Home tab over in the Paragraph group, we'll want to turn on the Show Hide button. This will show us every occurrence of when we've pressed the Enter key. The Show Hide button will display characters on the screen for us, but will not print these non-printing characters on paper if we were to print the letter on paper. Now, let's verify that the font face and font size are set at the specified options. Calibri 11 point is the default. Unless specified otherwise, these options will work just fine. Now, we'll go over to the Styles group on the Home tab and click on the No Spacing option. We do this to prevent Word from a printing additional unwanted white space between our paragraphs. Next, we'll want to turn on the ruler. We turn on the ruler through the View tab and click on the option for Ruler in the Show group. Notice that gives us both a horizontal and a vertical ruler on the page. The ruler starts at the edge of the page, which gives us negative zero, where our cursor's flashing is actually the, actually it gives us negative one at the edge of the mar margin, or at the edge of the page. The zero mark of the ruler is where the cursor begins. We'll press the Enter key five times so that our cursor goes down to the one inch mark on the ruler which is actually two inches from the edge of the page. The assumption is that our business letter will be printed on letterhead so we need to allow some space at the top of the page for that. Even though we've only pressed enter five times, we actually see six paragraph marks. Our cursor is to the left of the sixth one so we can see that one, two, three, four, five enters have actually been pressed. The first thing that comes on our letter is the date. Let's go ahead and key in the date for the letter. Okay. Following the date, the next piece of information is the inside address. Here we'll press the Enter key four times. Notice that gives us three blank lines between the date and the position of our cursor. The inside address is the name of the person that is receiving the letter. We press the Enter key one time between each line of the inside address. Notice when we press the Enter key, Word has given us a red squiggly underline underneath the word Briarly. This is because the word is not found in the dictionary. This is a visual cue to us to say, hey, this word's not in the dictionary. You want to check to see if it's misspelled or not. The next line of the inside address is the title of the recipient. Third line would be the name of the company. Fourth line is the street address. And finally, the last line of the inside address is the city, state, and zip code. Following the inside address, the next line is the salutation. The salutation is a greeting for the recipient and begins typically with the word dear. The salutation is followed by a colon. A double space below the salutation begins the body of the letter. Notice there's one blank line between the salutation and our cursor at this point. We type in the body of the letter. Be sure that you're not pressing enter at the end of each line. Notice there are no paragraph marks there. Microsoft Word has a feature called Word Wrap that will automatically push the text to the next line when we run out of room. The only time you would press enter is at the end of a paragraph and to accomplish a blank line, like these blank lines between the paragraphs of our letter. We have only one blank line between paragraphs. We have a word your underlined in blue. Word is telling us that this doesn't seem correct, so we can right click on the visual cue. It will give us optional words that we may want to change our word to at the very top of this quick menu, or if we consider it correct, we can choose the ignore option. 
Okay, I'm going to move my cursor back to the end of the last paragraph. A double space below the last paragraph, we key in the complimentary close. The complimentary close is something like sincerely, cordially, yours truly, and so forth. I'm going to use sincerely here. The complimentary close is followed by a comma. Then we press the enter key four times, giving us three blank lines for the writer of the letter to sign their name. Then we key in the type signature. On the next line following the type signature, no double space, just on the very next line, we key in the reference initial. These are the initials of the typist of the letter. GDP compares what you've typed for your reference initials with what you've entered for your first and last name when you created your account. It looks for the first letter of your first name, the first letter of your last name, and that is how it judges correctness. Okay, let's look back through our letter here, and we see that we've pressed the Enter key five times to get to the date line. Then we've pressed the Enter key four times to type the inside address. A double space below that, we have the salutation. Double space below that, we have the body of the letter. After the last paragraph in the body of the letter, we key the complementary close, followed by a comma. Press the Enter key four times, allowing room for the signature. Then we have the typed signature, and on the very next line, we have the reference initials. That about sums it up. We've now created a letter in block style. All parts of a standard letter are present. You should now be prepared to take your letter test.